And let's add custom villagers to Minecraft. More in-depth topics for Minecraft modding available in the 121 modding courses linked below, covering writable and tameable entities, custom entity armor, and even custom entity inventories, among many more awesome topics. All right, fans, I'm back to tell you once more. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be adding a custom villager type to our Minecraft mod. And this is going to be the Cowpinger as sort of you're gonna listen okay you're gonna see why in just a second or you've already seen it in the in the intro and basically a custom villager type is gonna come with two different things a custom villager profession that's basically the type as well as a point type which is a point of interest and we'll do both of those in one class and then we'll also have to add a couple of tags and stuff like that but we'll go through one step at a time in tutorial mod in the tutorial mod package we're gonna right click new package called villager and there we'll need one class, which is going to be the mod villagers class. Now, this one will contain both the poi type as well as the villager profession. Do know that, of course, you could also split it up. You could have a mod poi type class and a mod villager class, stuff like that. We're just going to put all of it together because in, in this case, both of them sort of belong together. So this is going to require a public static final deferred register of type poi type. There you go, poi type from NetMicroft World. Entity II village poi. And this is going to be the poi underscore types equal to a deferred register dot create built in registries dot. This is going to be for the point of interest type for tutorial mod dot mod ID, of course. And then a second deferred register, which is going to be quite interesting. And that one is for the villager profession. We're going to call this villager underscore professions equal to a deferred register dot create built in registries dot villager profession. And here we have tutorial mod mod ID again. As per usual, of course, all of the code is available to you down below. So you can double check it there as well. And that should be fine. It's not necessarily needed because the code here is actually quite tame, let's say. Uh, but of course, it's still available there. So there you go. In the register method, we want to call poi types that register, passing in the event bus parameter. And we also want to say villager professions that register passing in the event bus right here as well. And then let's actually go immediately to the tutorial mod class and register this. So mod villagers dot register. So calling the register method here and then passing in the mod event bus right there. And then we need to register, of course, the poi. So the poi type as well as the villager profession. The first thing is the poi type. That's going to be public static final holder of type poi type. So poi type. There we go. This is going to be the Kalton Poi. I just called it Kalton Poi. It's really not going to be anything interesting. Uh, we're going to be fine. Basically, this is just, uh, we're basically just going to take, you know, run of our random blocks, right? That we could you'd use a chair, for example, or we'd use the bismuth block. We'll just see. So the Kalton Poi is going to be equal to Poi types dot register dot register. There we go. The name is going to be Kalton underscore Poi. Do note of the naming right here. This is very important. We're going to need that in just a second. And the second parameter is a supplier of a new poi type, so it actually should suggest this to us already, of immutable set. So this is going to be an immutable set dot copy of, very important, and this is going to look quite crazy, but I'm going to explain in just a second, of mod blocks dot, and then here we can just take a block. Let's just use the chair, because why the frick not? So mod blocks dot chair, or whatever block you choose, dot get, dot get state definition, dot get possible states. And this is actually pretty good. After the second closing parentheses, comma one and one. And there we go. Now I'm going to explain what this is. The poi type basically needs a block, right? But it doesn't just need a block. It needs a block and then all its possible states. And the chair is actually a great example of this. Because when you have a state definition, basically meaning the block state, right? So this we're trying to get the block state of this. The chair can have four different block states because it is a horizontal directional block and the block state can change because it has a block state property facing that can take one of four different values. And that is why we need to get all of those values. And that's why we need to get all of those possible states and put them all into an immutable set here in this case. Do note that yes, you can also use vanilla blocks right here. Do note that if you want to make a like a beekeeper villager, you cannot just use the like the bees nest or something like that because that does not work because that is already a poi type. And if I had a second poi type, right, I would call it like Calvin poi type two. You could not reuse the same block. So uh, a block is always only ever one you know point of interest basically. Uh, you should be able to take a look at this in the poi types class. So shift twice and then poi types include non-project items. And in this particular class, you can see the different things here. 
And if you go down to here, you can see the beehive and the bee nest. And those get the block states from the beehive and the bee nest. And that is why you are unable to actually create a poi type for that to create a like a bee villager, basically. So that's a very important point because that's uh, something that a lot of people actually run into because they want to add like, you know, beekeeper villagers. That's the poi type. The second thing is going to be a public static final holder of villager profession. Not a villager, but villager profession. This is going to be the cowpinger, <laughs> uh, equal to the villager profession dot register. It's going to be the cowpinger here again, making sure we write this correctly. Cowpinger, there we go. And then this is a supplier, the second parameter of a new villager profession, uh, passing in the name again, so cowpinger. Then we want to do a holder, and then a the same arrow that you do for a supplier. I'm going to say holder dot value equals cowpoy dot value. So this is, uh, is the equals operator, by the way. So the comparison operator, very important. The third parameter would be a, we can call it holder or poi type holder. It doesn't matter that much. Uh, but there we want to then call poi type holder dot value. Once again, equal operator, count poi dot value. Then an immutable set dot of, which is going to be kept empty. An immutable set dot of, which is going to get kept empty. And after the set here, last thing, we want a sound. So this is going to be, we're just going to choose mod sounds dot Let's do the let's do the magic block hit dot get over here. Uh, this is going to be the sound that is played when the cowpinger or the villager takes on the cowpinger profession. The first two parameters or the, th the, the three ones over here, the predicates, the these are basically okay. Which is our poi type for this particular villager, right? And then just expressed as you can see right here as a predicate, right? So you take a holder and you just say okay, if the holder is the cowpinger poi, then we're able to basically get this particular profession. Uh, you can also take a look at the villager professions class. I'm pretty sure that should be what it might also be called villagers. Actually, it might be villagers. It might actually be the villager profession itself. It actually is. That is where they defined. And you can see that the other things over here are the requested items. In this case, we don't have a requested item for our worker and we also don't have a secondary poi. Uh, so if you had a secondary poi, then the then the villager would go from one point of interest to another to basically work. Right, that's sort of a very uh, rough estimate. You can also check in the villager profession class all of the different values for the vanilla villagers. Now that we have this, we are basically almost good to go. We have the we have the poi, we have the villager. Those are both registered, and now we need to go down to the assets and actually add the rest here, starting with the translation. The translation looks like this entity dot minecraft dot villager dot tutorial mod dot cowpinger. Otherwise, that when you open the inventory with it, then this is what's going to show up, which is obviously not good, right? We want to properly translate it, and there we go. Then we need a texture. So this is going to be under tutorial mode textures, entity. And so that there, we'll make a new directory uh, in the entity directory. Yes, we're going to make a new directory called villager. And then inside of there, another new directory called profession, making sure we write this correctly. And there we want the cowpinger.png, of course, this one is going to be available to you for download as well. And make sure that the name of the, the PNG right here obviously matches the name exactly of the villager profession name that you have registered this with. And it has to be under textures, entity, villager, profession, and then there we go. Lastly, and this is actually very important, and this is this thing that's can this very easy to introduce a typo in here. We want to go to the following. We want to go to resources, data, Minecraft, tags, and then here... This is extremely important. Do note, uh, be, the best thing is to go to the GitHub repository and actually double check the spelling because it is super easy to make a spelling mistake here. Inside of data, Minecraft tags, we want to make the point underscore of underscore interest underscore type. Is it type or is it types? It is type. There we go. Point underscore of underscore interest underscore type. Super important that it is correct. And then the JSON file that goes in there. So right click on it new file and there's going to be the acquirable underscore job underscore site dot json listen it is super easy to make a cut typo in here just double check this okay and inside of it we're going to have the following we're going to have a replace false so this is just a normal tag but the value here is going to be tutorial mod colon cowpen underscore poi making sure that the name right here matches the name given right here like I said, it is super easy to make a mistake right here. I've seen basically every permutation of like issues. The point of interest type had a typo in there. The JSON file had a typo in there. The JSON file like contents had a, a typo. The folder was inside of the tutorial mod folder instead of the data Minecraft tags folder. 
all sorts of different things. Double check this. If it does not work, then obviously there has to be a typo somewhere. I know it's sometimes hard to find. L listen, okay? I have probably had more typos w within Minecraft modding that you like can even imagine. I'm genuinely serious. It is crazy. But that is the general setup over here. When it comes to the traits in this case we're not going to add the traits we're going to add the traits in the next tutorial right now i just want the villager added that's going to be all that we need for this so let's jump into the game and see if it works all right friends we're back in minecraft and let's just set down a chair and set a villager next to it and in theory well it's going to go away let's see okay maybe maybe you want to go to the chair my friend yes he does and Ta-da! There we freaking go. Okay, for some reason, apparently the, the entrance over here was far more interesting than why, I don't know, but there you go. And if I were to put out a couple of other ones, you can see they're all turning into me. Well, I mean, I don't have my skin right now, but oh no, what is happening? So many counters. What are we supposed to do? Well, of course, if I were to right-click them, you can see they don't have any trays right now, but that is what we'll do in the next tutorial. But for the time being, custom villagers added to Minecraft. Awesome. And there you have it. As per usual, all of the code is available to you down below. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, like I said, custom villager trades. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.